got the trailer loaded up, and we're about to go pick up my She is. Came all the way down to West Virginia to get it. Uh, transaction was uh, Facebook smooth. It was in kind of okay. Um, I'll show you what's going on. So first off, the bike didn't have 150 miles on it. It had 450 miles on it. I was kind of bummed about that. Not to mention somebody had let it fall over a little bit. There's some scratches here, down here and here. It's minor stuff. Um, I was already getting a really great deal on it, so didn't complain too much. And I got it all wrapped up. I'm ready to go. So. Next step is some off-road tomorrow. So as I kind of alluded to it before, the exchange wasn't perfect. Uh, it was still pretty good. I mean, I got the bike for a phenomenal price, um, way less than what it is MSRP. So I think that the owner knew that either way I was gonna take this bike. At one point he was like, here, just take the $200 for the drive, get out of here. And I was like, well, this is like immediately after uh, speaking to his son and being like, hey, listen, the bike had fallen over. It's got 300 extra miles on it. And none of the parts are here that you said come with it. And then the, I guess his dad, who's kind of bailing out of the situation is like, fuck you, if you don't want this price, somebody else is gonna pay this for it. So take it or leave it. And uh, not much you can do. <laughs> well, it just drove like 450 miles. I wasn't gonna go home. So um, I got the bike. I'm still very happy. I can't wait to ride it. We'll see. Um, alluding to one other thing. So like I said, the parts weren't here meaning that they're at a dealership in Charleston, West Virginia, who's closed right now for Corona. So uh, I'm, I'm really hoping that they hold up to their end of the bargain and they send me those parts uh, to be seen in a couple weeks. This will all be behind me. Uh, I'm just happy to have the bike, but we'll see. Hopefully I get myself uh, you know, a cruise control and quick shifter and those. Just a little side note, the people I bought this from also sell weed. Second side note is they bought me a pizza from the shop that they own to, to smooth things over. Thanks to you guys. Pizza's great. Now I will say, Logan, West Virginia is a tiny town, but it's really pretty. It's got this beautiful river in the back and just not used to all these hills and I don't know, they're kinda, they're kinda like baby mountains everywhere this is really cool i'm sure this would be a great place to ride but unfortunately i'm going to jackson ohio to uh to ride in the uh shawnee state park tomorrow so not staying in this area to ride but i'm sure the, the trails would be epic all right so i'm at AutoZone because uh i noticed on the trailer oh, almost fell over that one of the, the grease fitting that's supposed to go right there uh fell out and uh i noticed that on my way down here, it's supposed to look like this. And I just passed an auto zone, so I'm gonna get that right now. All right, so that's what a grease fitting is supposed to look like. Uh, now that that sticks, moving on. All right, so I'm in West Virginia right now. Got the bike, got all my riding gear, ready to go ride. And it just so happens that between West Virginia and Cincinnati, where I'm heading, some great riding. So, uh, tonight I am going to camp out at a buddy's hunting property. I still out there a long time ago. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna camp out. It's gonna be cold, it's gonna be like 30 degrees, but I'm gonna play around with some of the settings on the bike and come tomorrow, I'm gonna ride. And I'm super pumped. I'm going to Shawnee State Park, uh, which is Yeah, um, south, southern, south, southern central Ohio, I guess. So Shawnee State Park, um, there's a loop that was set up on ADVRider.com that I saw, so I'm just gonna take that loop and do a little bit of mixed terrain. Um, I don't know, I guess there's probably gonna be some twisty roads. There's gonna be some, uh, some dirt roads We'll see if there's any, there's even some challenges apparently on the uh, on the trail that's listed, so uh, might be doing some fun stuff. 
but first day out on the KTM 790 Adventure R, I am super pumped, so I'm gonna set up uh, as much of the suspension as I can tonight, and just maybe go through some of my ride settings and get upset where I've been told are good areas, and um, yeah, and then I'm gonna go ride, and I'm gonna ride for a couple hours, and then uh, tomorrow's Sunday, so I'm gonna home, head home and get ready for the week. But it's been a great weekend so far, and I'm looking forward to it. It's starting to sit in and it's going to be a really cold and dark night. <laughs> getting late, late start on uh, setting up and uh, I haven't had dinner, but I've got a backpack on here that I, a recipe I wanted to try, so I'm going to try that and uh, keep it the stove, get some boiling water, boil it in the package and uh, let that sit for a little while and then I'll set up camp while that's kind of stewing and uh, hopefully it's good. We'll see. Much happier to camp on once the tent, the, the tent is up and camp is ready. Because uh, this time of night, this is late. I want to get it done. I'm not done. Alright, so here's my uh, camp setup for the night. Got my pack and everything in the vestibule, plenty of room. And I got my sleeping bag out, and it's going to be down in the 30s tonight. So I uh, got some extra gear laid out, some fresh change of clothes, fresh socks. And some riding gear for tomorrow, and it's uh, probably like 10 15, so I'm just gonna hit the hay. Ooh, big yawn. Mm. It was a cold night. Ooh. This 20 degree sleeping bag. So. 10 or 15 years old now. So, it's a little chillier than 20 degrees sleeping bag. Yeah, I agree appreciate the limits, but you know what? The first, first night sleeping in the woods is always a little rough. I mean, just look at me. <laughs> but hey, made it. I know that right outside that door is a beautiful vista. And um, I get to go ride bikes today. Perfect. All right, stop looking at this uh, this ugly mug. I need the shoes to be pretty this morning. Let's uh, let's take a look. Uh, first of all, shout out to Ed Beely. Thank you very much for letting me use your property this week. Uh, it's a beautiful camp spot looks down uh, in this little ravine here and there's a nice little pond here I got fish out of I go catch a couple this morning all right so I uh, I woke up to a couple text messages from my cousins asking if I was alive uh, these are the guys that also have gotten into adventure riding with me and uh, they're like itching to hear the, the reviews on the bike so I know you guys are waiting for that, but at the same time, here I am in this beautiful land. Uh, my tent's still drying out. And uh, so yeah, while my gear dries out a little bit, there's this pond that has been known to hold some, not big fish, it's a little pond, but there are some hungry fish. And so I'm gonna go down there and catch a couple fish while this dries out another 15, 20 minutes, and then uh, 
pack up and hit the road. Got one. Let's see if we can get one more. Alright, so like uh, most of the parks for the parking lots and stuff that I would uh, put the bike and the trailer in, are closed today so I'm literally just in a construction pull off on the side of the road <laughs> I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna park the bike here or I'm gonna park the truck here and rather and uh, get the bike ready and then offload it and just leave the truck here for a couple hours can't do too much harm so the bike made it here first thing I want to check right off the bat is I want to check the tire pressure make sure that that's good uh, right where I want it and then before I even take the bike off of here probably going to check the sag in the back suspension uh, and just make sure that this is kind of set for me or close to it from the get-go uh, and then I'm not sure just depends on how antsy I get but one thing I do want to do is uh, there are three settings right here for the uh, bar risers and um, I'm gonna move it up to this last hole which is gonna bring the whole set of handlebars this way and then I'm just gonna check to make sure that the handlebars and the uh, and the shifter 
um, grips and stuff like that are all kind of right where I want them uh, before I even take the bike off of here because this is fantastic that the bike is being held vertical. That's not, I don't have a center stand, so it's kind of hard to achieve otherwise. So I'm gonna use it to my advantage to do this setup real quick. Uh, should take like a half hour and then, um, then I'm off and I'm riding. <laughs> All right, so I just took off the plastics on both sides. Uh, I don't know what was up with the owner prior. This, uh, this bike doesn't even have the toolkit on board right now. It's not in either of the compartments, which is shocking because I've never, ever, ever seen a bike that didn't have the OEM toolkit stashed somewhere on it. Um, but uh, the other thing is, I mean, check out his te chain tension or lack thereof. It is so loose. I, I just... I'm blown away. Thank God I've got this bike at 430 miles and not same owner selling this to me at 2,000 miles because there's some things on this bike that if they weren't addressed, that's something that, that's not good. <laughs> this guy did not deserve to own this bike prior. He just did not know what he was getting into. But it's rich people throwing away money for you. I'm just hoping he uh, still has the toolkit and half the parts that are sitting at the dealership that I'm supposed to be picking up. We'll see. So, luck luckily I brought some tools. They're, they happen to be the ones I need for the most vital thing, which is tensioning up that chain a little bit. And again, this is why you check your bike over when you first buy it, because uh, shit like that. So uh, I am going to go ahead and take that, loosen that up, then tension both sides. You see these little markings right here. I'm gonna push the wheel back. It's gonna tension the chain on the other side there to uh, an acceptable amount, and then I will. Can't really do a ton of the suspension stuff. I've got some, got some uh, Allen wrenches and things like that, um, so I might be able to get some of it done. But I think the I'm just gonna do as much as I can, and then pump up the tires and, and go ride because I'm ready to roll. And this was unexpected. Really quite annoyed about the uh, there's been a lot of surprises thus far with this purchase, and uh, from an outsider's perspective, it just seems to be a kid that's got a rich daddy that throws money at stuff, and uh, his dad is selling this bike, trying to convince him not to ride. Man, I mean, not having the toolkit, not have. Not saying anything about it being laid down, even though it's a zero speed lay down. Uh, having four times more miles than it is uh, stated. Just not having the parts, having the parts in, that are at a dealership, not with the bike, all those kind of things. It's like kind of important to know about. You know, and I asked them so many times, hey, are there any surprises? And, uh, Oh, the whole little funny surprises. Yeah. Two to five millimeters of movement upward. Twenty-five millimeters behind. Good. And from here. Just a little more. Just using the tools I got with me, really. I'm using these markings here to make sure that 
all sides of it. It's going too quickly. Okay, I'm gonna do a little more on the other side, but. That's more like it. That is more like it. So now, according to this measurement, right about there, you should have two to five millimeters of flex, not two to five centimeters. So that's much better for the bike.
Okay, this is this is getting too tough to film. I'm so sorry. There's just so much beautiful road, and unfortunately, my GoPro is already dead. And um, it's really hard to do this because I need the phone for the navigation. And um, yeah, I don't have that. Then I'm just gonna I just keep getting to these folks on the road not knowing if they're going to go, so I'm switching back to navigation and no more filming. Alright, I know I said I wasn't going to do much uh, videotaping, but I mean, damn, that is a cool vista. I am blown away at what Southern Ohio, Southeastern Ohio has, uh, has to offer.
not the same, but there was the same current.